60 Minutes Rewind. Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini today was interviewed by Mike Wallace. The first interview by an American reporter since the ordeal of hostages began. The interview came early during a day in which later three hostages were put on display pending their promised release and amid reports that the Ayatollah and others now were mentioning possible trials for remaining hostages if the former Shah of Iran is not handed over by the United States. During the interview, you sometimes will hear an interpreter translating from our studios in New York. At other times, you will hear the official interpreter present at the interview with written answers to some of the questions which we had to submit in advance. If there is some turmoil in Tehran, there was none apparent this morning in the holy city of Qom, a hundred miles to the south. There, guarded by a lone soldier on a rooftop, is the modest compound of the Ayatollah Khomeini. This morning, in his reception room, the ground rules for the interview were carefully spelled out. No question could be asked unless it was approved ahead of time. No questions about Iran's internal politics. No questions about a lack of freedom under the Ayatollah. But there seemed no pattern to those questions that were disallowed. About half of those we proposed were simply forbidden. The interpreter said he would refuse even to ask the Ayatollah any questions that he, the interpreter, deemed inappropriate. To begin with, of course, we wanted to learn about the hostages held in the American embassy compound. Do you still say, Imam, that if the Shah, the ex-Shah, is not returned to Iran, that those American hostages in the American embassy compound will not be freed? In the name of God, the most merciful and gracious, this issue has to do with the people. The 35 million population of Iran want this, and we must investigate why the population wants the Shah returned. And unless he is returned, the hostages will not be freed. Then, reading from a prepared text, the Ayatollah's official interpreter said, the Shah has to return and tell us where his money is, and we have to know the extent of his treason against our people. The reasons for the people's insistence for the Shah's return. One, that this is a, a nation with a poor economy, that uh, uh, the wealth of these people have been plundered by the Shah and his relatives, have been uh, taken out of the country, are being deposited in various US and European banks, and uh, these are the money which indeed belong to the people, to these poor people. Right. And therefore, he has to come, he has to return and tell us where are these monies and why they are there. The second, which is even more important than the first reason, is that we want him back to show the extent of the crimes committed by this person during 37 years of his rule. We have to know the extent of his treasons in this country. This is why that uh, he has to return and he has to be tried. And then the courts will decide. But that is case. not an answer to whether the hostages but, uh, will be freed. I just gave an answer. The people will it, and we can't go against this will. Then the, then the hostages will remain there in the American embassy compound, what, for life, forever? They will remain until the Shah is returned. It is in the hands of Carter. Carter can free them by returning the Shah. Imam President Carter, accuses your government of practicing terrorism and says that your regime will be held accountable if those U.S. hostages are harmed. The 35 million people of Iran are terrorists? Ask Carter, you interpret politics like this? 
You call our people terrorists? I have heard what Carter says of them. And it doesn't make sense. He says they are not students. They are bums, mobs. They are terrorists. You know these as terrorists? This is an insult to students and people across the nation. You consider our people terrorists? You un understand them of politics? Is that we are a nation of terrorists? We are Muslims. We, this is an insult. Imam President Sadat of Egypt, a devoutly religious man, a Muslim, says that what you are doing now is, quote, a disgrace to Islam. And he calls you, Imam, forgive me, his words, not mine, a lunatic. I know that you have heard that comment. That's, yes, that's, that's what I heard President Sadat say on American television. Yes. that the imam is a disgrace to Islam, yes. and he used the word a lunatic. Sadat, Sadat states he is a Muslim, and we are not. He is not, for he compromises with the enemies of Islam. Sadat has united with our enemies. Sadat knows well what is occurring south of Lebanon and with the Palestinians. He knows the crimes of Israel. Yet he still considers Begin a friend and himself a Muslim. You must try to evaluate what he is doing then through Islam. The Egyptian people do not back Sadat. And once again, the official interpreter reading from his prepared and text. I demand that Egyptian people try to overthrow him just as we did with the Shah. He calls upon the Egyptian people he to does. overthrow Sadat. He does. The way the Iranian people overthrew the Shah. Exactly. What? <coughs> We hear, Imam, that today, perhaps today, some black hostages and some female hostages will be released from the American embassy compound. Is that true? The freedom of the women and blacks will be given. Women are given great dignity in Islam, and the blacks have been oppressed in the United States. Great injustice was done unto them. They were under pressure in the United States. Thus they came here. We are doing this owing to the tenets of Islam. In return, we ask nothing for their freedom. We want the Shah. Carter must return him. The world's international law agree with this principle. I ask you, as an American and a human being, talking to an Iranian and another human being. Is there no room for compromise? Or is, or is Iran now, in effect, at war with the United States? I'm sorry, I can't answer, ask that first question well, that because that one was crossed out. As a thing, well, Imam, Imam, are you is Iran, in effect, at war with the United States now? Hazrat Imam, Ayah Janab Ali, ya betul kul Iran, dar hal hazir, wa imdikar, dar hal jang hasti? Jang, maksud chi hast? Agar maksud ini hast ke 
What do you mean by war? If you mean our armies against the United States armies, no, there is no such war. If you mean it is a battle of nerves, it is Carter's doing. We are against war. We are Muslims. We desire peace for all. Carter does not allow this. Carter should put aside his so-called humanism and return the criminal Shah so that we can conclude this matter. The Shah is a criminal. We all know this. This spyness you call the U.S. Embassy then can be returned to a place of humanism and diplomacy. Carter must return the Shah. We have nothing against the people of the United States. But if the president says he refuses to return the Shah, and if the Imam says he will not free the hostages, then what, what can be the answer? Well, I'm not sure if I can get the answer because this was not in the question. Please but, uh, ask him. I'm sure it's a very simple, straightforward uh, question. It's not about the Tehran Mahmoud. It's very simple. Let's say something that is not in the question. But this question is not in the question. He will not discuss it. He's that. not even going to listen to it because it's right. not in the here. All right. If the Imam was so convinced that the U.S. Embassy was a spy center, why did he not close it down and break off relations with the United States? Why did he wait for this group of young Iranians to take it over? <laughs> We didn't think an embassy could be a center of spying. I didn't realize this until our students found the necessary evidence. I didn't realize Carter going against all international law tenants would allow this spying and conspiracy at the American Embassy. Now that our students have done this, taken the embassy with the backing of all the people of Iran, we have now realized, we have now realized that the American Embassy has been a center for spying. The story will continue after this. Imam, could you, would you permit me to go to the American Embassy compound and talk to the hostages who are there? Okay. Yes, you could. I can go. It does not matter. Allow him to go and observe. Our young are there, and they will show him that the Americans are safe and healthy. There is no problem in going. They are under protection, and nothing will occur to them. Islam protects the prisoner, and Islam is humane. We are Muslims. Our students are Muslim students. They will protect the prisoners. I have asked my son to observe and ensure their safety. He reported to me that they are all well. I personally wish 
and hope for their safety. The prisoners, the prisoners at the United States Embassy must ask Carter to allow the Shah to return so they may again gain their freedom. Well, despite that, Mike Wallace was not allowed into the embassy. But this afternoon, Iranians brought three of the hostages before cameras for what they called a brief news conference. The three were Catherine Gross of Cambridge Springs, Pennsylvania, a part-time embassy secretary, and two Marine sergeants, Liddell Maples of Errol, Arkansas, and William Quarles of Washington, D.C. These three Americans, it was said, would be released later. Whether they are the only three to be released was not made explicitly clear. <laughs>